What's happening guys and welcome to another episode of Bitcoin Weekly. So in today's video we're going to be primarily focusing on the move up within this very steep ascending pitchfork here. We're currently on the daily time frame. So we're looking on the higher time frames here. I spoke at length about my long term projection for where I see price going to this year with an estimate of around 170k. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of that. If you want to check out the full length video on that, come to my YouTube channel, check out my last video. We went into it in detail in this video right here. What we're really going to focus on in today's video is just seeing how this is shaping up, seeing you know how far we're going to likely to retrace before continuing the upward move. These are the main details to be covered. And of course, we want to discuss that in keeping with any kind of major catalysts on the near horizon. OK, so. With that said, let's just zoom in on the four hourly time frame. And as you can see here, we've had a pretty lengthy consolidation for about three months from this point here. So from here to here, it's been a roughly three months. Now, I believe that it's very likely that we completed the correction down to here and that we're just continuing the upward trend now. It's not for certain. There is the possibility of a more complex correction. So far, this has only been a three way wish move up. It could therefore turn out to be just an X wave of a larger corrective pattern, making a three wave move down to make a W, an X wave, and then a Y wave. That potentially brings you back down to this level of around uh, 58K or even 59K. Okay, so that's certainly possible. All right, so, but I don't think it's as probable at present. Uh, I think things are really starting to move and. Um, and if we are to get into the target, which I think is very likely for us to target the upper warning line of this pitchfork before the US election, well, it can't hover around too long if it's going to make its way to this point. So I think there's going to come a point where price feels the urge to start moving. And I think very likely we're going to see some strong bullish price action within June, whether it's to the end of June or not is hard to determine just yet. But I believe June is going to be a strong month. OK, that said, long term, my stop is down here It's beneath the lower median line. So just zooming out on the daily. This is my invalidation line, so I do not want to see price drop beneath this lower median line right here. OK, that's my invalidation point. Yes, it can correct. I don't mind it coming all the way down to here. OK, a wick down can be tolerated, but ultimately I want this line to act as support. OK, anything. Uh, any strong closes on the daily time frame beneath this, I would be deeply concerned and I wouldn't be wanting to hold on to any long positions in such a situation. Uh, but as I say, I believe that from here we can continue the upside move. A pretty strong run into the upper median line is probably due very soon. Then we're likely to get a bit of consolidation before resuming the upward trend into this 170k target upper warning line up here. And I believe this will happen probably a, at least a month before the US election is due. So this vertical line is the US election. I'll explain this one here, which is a very uh, close and upcoming catalyst that we need to discuss, uh, which a lot of you may be aware of, no doubt, but it's a very important level to be looking at right now. Um, so yeah, so that's the kind of move we're looking into and the invalidation is here. So that's really important, first of all, to mark out our invalidation and target. And then coming down to the four hourly, as I say, the way things are playing here, there's a good chance that's completed a correction. It's bounced off a really key level. That's this uh, quarterly level. So if you go on the three monthly chart, you'll see it as being a very important quarterly level. On top of that, there's some important Camarilla pivot support here on the weekly time frame, but we'll bring on the Camarilla pivot shortly. So now if we just take a look at this, let's go, let's really home in on this. Let's go down to the one hourly time frame and look at the kind of way it's playing out. We got here following the bounce off of this 57k level. We've got an impulse, a corrective move, followed by what looks like another impulse. And now we've made this long uh, duration pause again. And the way things are looking, when you get that kind of equal top scenario, there's a good chance you're going to make a regular flat and hence target equal lows. OK, so there's a relatively good chance that we come down to this point here and it could be this time catalyst that allows us to go back up. This is quite simply the Fed rate decision on Wednesday. OK, 
on top of fed rates we've so fed rates are coming in 6 p.m gmt uh but earlier on in the day we've got the cpi data so it's a massive day obviously the cpi is going to influence upon the interest rate also um so massive day for the markets really and so that is a potential time catalyst where things can turn around and so in terms of the wave count i'm not hugely bothered about the exact count because i mean this can be an a b c in which case you would expect a five wave move down for the c which the way it's playing out i don't see how five waves are going to fit into here unless it's going to be some kind of ending diagonal but that would take too long so it could very easily be just a, a wxy so three down three up and another three down to make the y wave uh, just still making that kind of rectangular bit of price action alternatively it could very well be uh let's bring on the a b c just a three wave move down uh so that's the a the b the c and then we get a d and an e to make an ascending triangle so that's an a b c d and e this horizontal line acting as the resistance to the ascending triangle and then you've got your higher lows coming in here with the a the c and the e okay so that may mean we don't actually come down as far as 67k so until we really wait for the kind of catalyst to, to come into play it's a guessing game yeah all of these different playouts can occur uh, there's a million and one different corrections that can play out so i've always found it best to just hang tight we're not gonna we're not gonna suddenly break out until this catalyst comes okay we're gonna have to wait for this catalyst yeah this is just how the markets uh, work they're all gonna be waiting for that interest rate decision uh, and so the sooner we get closer to that we'll get a better picture of what's playing out okay so as i say these are the kind of patterns that i'm looking out for the perhaps a ascending triangle or the regular flat which is i call it a regular flat it could very easily be a wxy in, in terms of wave count but we're looking for equal highs and equal lows these are the two possibilities but as i say i'm playing this for more of a position um long-term position my invalidation is all the way down here lower median line so i really not too interested if it does play out with either scenario and to be honest even if it does come down further as i say i'm happy for price to come down all the way down to potentially this lower median line okay even doing this it's still got a, a fantastic opportunity to continue the upward trend regardless this is all looking corrective and very likely you know we're going to see these highs get taken out okay this just does not look like a topping pattern at all whether it's going to come down slightly and go up or whether it's going to come down and make a bigger corrective pattern and go up is yet to be seen uh, as i say i'm still leaning towards the fact that this is going to be a shorter term correction and we're going to continue the move up pretty soon but as i say regardless invalidations down here and i see this has been a great move for 2024 altogether okay so this is generally what i'm looking out for uh this is a very important time catalyst as i say uh so we'll get a better picture of that on wednesday and um yeah i do want to just pull up the camera the pivots they're always very useful to take into consideration so starting on the weekly and we're going to zoom in now just to home in on this recent dip that we had so i mentioned the bounce off of this level around the 57k level it was our quarterly level which i've labeled but also it's the r4 of this weekly camera pivot okay so we've hit that very nicely and i believe having tested it we've now got every reason just to continue the upward trend we don't necessarily need to test it once more it's possible as i say we could get that um further test down here once more but just doesn't need to happen it's already been a level that's tested and i think we're very it's more likely we are going to just keep pushing up here uh, but we'll have to wait and see will wednesday's fed rate decision work in favor of bitcoin ultimately it's a kind of a rate cut that would be the better scenario that would send the markets higher um, of course the nfp result that came out the other day worked against that with a higher than expected report um, so the cpi is going to be massive yeah on wednesday cpi's result is going to be massive in influencing the uh the interest rate decision uh obviously the the eu uh ecb rather reduced their rates will the us follow suit we'll, we'll soon find out um so yeah that's the weekly camera pivot the daily is actually another interesting camera pivot because this is where we're finding some resistance so here 
On the daily time frame, these periods here represent a month. So this is the month of June. We have come up and we have hit the R3 very nicely and it's just using it as a bit of resistance. So ideally what you want to see is just um, consolidation building up beneath this R3 level and then looking for the, the trade to the upside. But as I say, I would look for that post catalyst. Yeah. So allow the catalyst to play out so that you're not you know, at risk of any sudden um, stop getting taken out if you're sh trading on the lower time frames. And then just wait for the pause as because no doubt it will consolidate a little bit when it gets to this level before the eventual breakout. So very important level at 71.7K there with the daily camera pivot. The, the use of these camera pivots is the fact that between the halfway point between the R3 and the S3 is the open for the time period. So this being on the daily time frame, these periods represent a month. So the open for the month is simply the halfway point. So you can see it's just round here. So that's another reason why we might just revisit this level down here. It's the monthly open. So we might just get that tested once more before we use that as a platform to break to the upside, take out that very significant R3 level, get back above the median line, break out of the, the bigger correction, and then the upward trend. It's just got blue sky above it. And I, I expect the move to then occur very, very quickly into the upper median line. But as I say, few obstacles to overcome before we see that. Uh, we still have to see how we do with that interest rate decision. Will it drop down to this point and then go up? Will it make a more truncated move down and go up to make more of that ascending triangle that we discussed? These are the possibilities. But as I say, you don't need to predict these things. Just be patient. Let time play out. Let the catalyst play out. And uh, yeah, just be prepared around that time. So that's the daily. If we come down to the four hourly, so four hourly camera pivot, this each period now represents a week. So it's a very useful tool to look at weekly closes. So last week would be this period here, last candle finishing nicely above the, the R3. So it was a pretty strong week. We just shot up above the R4, failed to close above, which means we were still in corrective territory. Uh, but we stayed above the R3, showing us that we're not, it's not too weak, uh, the way in which we finished that week. Uh, and so we could potentially look for support off of the S3 or S4 this week. Uh, S4 would be in keeping with the, the the double top, double bottom scenario. And if we'd only come down to the S3, which, yeah, is, is possible, uh, then it'd be more in keeping with the ascending triangle scenario. So either way, but yeah, it's just a bit of confluence that we can look for for timing the eventual move to the upside. But as I say, patience is key. I wouldn't be, if I'm tr add, trying to add to a, a long-term position by putting on some shorter-term trades, I would certainly let the catalyst play out. Yeah, it's the it's the setups post-catalyst which are the most important. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of what I'm looking out for this week. Uh, as I say, I'm going to start making this as a weekly analysis each Monday and uh, hopefully we'll, that will be of use. I also do a, a detailed video for my group covering uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and the US indices and any other charts of interest uh, where I'm currently quite focused on Doge at the moment. I'm quite interested in that market. So the group can all be found at my website wave618.com as well as some free material if you do you are looking to boost your education. And I will leave links in this video to my Elliott Wave and Pitchfork tutorials that you'll be able to see within the screen now. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up with that. And yeah, let's see how the week plays out. Take care.